mentor, someone who gives help and advice to a less experienced colleague or young person. <laughs> Sometimes we find mentors in the oddest places. This good? Okay. <laughs> the throne. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. What's your name? Um, okay. <laughs> so, mentors? Mentors. Oh boy, that's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, I leave college, move to the city. Just a kid. Don't know the craft. So I sign up for a scene study class with Susan Gledhill. Maybe you, uh, maybe you remember her? She was a vicious, hateful woman. What an, what an obie for St. Joan. <laughs> Died doing what she loves most, making actors cry. I'm thinking, is this even legal? A student she didn't like, she'd hit him with her hairbrush, spit on him, make him strip. It was like Guantanamo, but totally worth it when she talked about Chekhov. My God. So anyway, um, I got assigned a scene with an older actor, Jeremy Flinkman. You may know his brother, Randy. Uh, did a few Xerox commercials and some porn in the 70s? <laughs> no? Anyway, Jeremy and I are doing a scene from The Sunshine Boys. I'm too young, but it gives me a chance to stretch. And we go out to his house in Montclair to rehearse. <laughs> Seemed like he'd got it made. But he's living in a big house in New Jersey, but he always forgets his key, so we have to break in. Come to find out, oh, he grew up there, but his parents sold the place when they deployed to Florida. So, we'd rehearse when no one was home. We'd watch their TV, eat their food. It was a nice break from the city. Also, Jeremy uh, had these acting exercises that we would bring to the scene work. For example, if you think about it, the Sunshine Boys is really about stealing. Jeremy really got it. This one exercise, I had to steal a, a ribeye from the Grand Union. I was terrified. I mean, I'm just learning the craft, but, but man, I have never tasted anything as good as that steak. Really deep in my process. The next exercise was to lift a pair of size 11 Florsheim shoes from Macy's. Here in the theatrical center of the universe, wouldn't you think the cops would have a clue about emotional preparation and the method? Nope. But I lucked out and got community service. It's November, it's freezing, lost a glove. I'm sweeping up whiskey bottles and condoms outside the Lincoln Tunnel. And honestly, I'm beginning to have doubts about my career. And that's when things started to change. I met this guy, Frenchie. Glass eye, cape, turban, he had it all going on. And he got me my real first acting gig. Later became my agent. <laughs> Thank you, Frenchie. May you rest in peace. <laughs> Assuming you're dead. <laughs> you see, what, what Frenchie did was he got paid to go into medical schools and act out various diseases for the doctors of tomorrow. <laughs> you know, with my training, I was perfect for this. It's the brave actors performing the leading diseases of our time who will help us beat Ebola, cancer, erectile di <laughs> Whoops. Can we, um, can we just cut that in post? <laughs> ah, thanks, hon. Um, so, I'm making money. And my performances are being called uh, stunning, <laughs> heartbreaking. Their words, not mine. And I commit so fully to chronic fatigue syndrome that I developed the actual symptoms myself. People said it was a sick, pathetic cry for attention. I should be ashamed of myself. 
and outside my family it was even worse. What are you going to do? One day, one day I'm portraying epilepsy, but, well, my performance lacks depth because of the chronic fatigue syndrome, and the doctor steps in. I leave thinking, do I even have a career anymore? And who do I run into but Jeremy Flinkman, <laughs> still wearing the floor shine shoes I stole. <laughs> Funny thing, I, I, I realized I missed the guy. Because of him, I got the, the community service opportunity and out of that, the medical gig. <laughs> I owed it all to my mentor, Jeremy Flinkman. <laughs> and guess what? Now he needs me. Yeah, he, he lost his scene partner to a gypsy cab on 6th Avenue. And I had some time, so we went out to the house in Montclair and, and there's a rotisserie chicken on the counter, almost like they left it for us. God, it's good to be home. But it's chilly in the house. So we put on their ski sweaters and eat their chicken. And Jeremy builds a fire and starts explaining the gay subtext in the Sunshine Boys, which, which frankly, I hadn't picked up on. I'm just a kid. What do I know? I don't know the craft. <laughs> and so what happens is we go upstairs. It, uh, Hey, uh, who, who's going to see this? You know, maybe, maybe we should just end it there. <laughs> Is that okay? I mean, you guys can, you can fix it in post, right? Great. Um, then I guess, I, I guess we have it. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> oh, that was harmless. <laughs> oh, there you are. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. Um, you know, am, am I correct that there's uh, no financial remuneration for drink tickets? Maybe a goodie bag? <laughs> no? Okay, well, th that's, that's perfectly okay. Absolutely fine. Thanks again. Pleasure. Um, I, out this way, right? Okay. I guess I'll get a cab. <laughs> no, maybe the bus. I was kind of hoping for a car, but I guess it's uh, low budget. <laughs>